much ado, we'll go straight to the issues of, of discourse this evening. So first we look at the issue, the recent, of course, the bill to amend the Police Act 2020. Of course, the critical position, which have generated a lot of tension, is uh, one of the provisions that seeks to extend you know, the tenor of the Inspector General of Police. A lot of yeah. critics you know, have uh, criticized that provision. Of course, there are some people who have also applauded uh, the provision that seeks to modernize the police force and all of that. So what do you have to say you know, concerning all of that? Well, the uh, proposed amendment, which um, has passed through first second authorities before the state and House of Representatives, which seeks to extend the tenor of the current IG, has sparked a lot of reactions from the Nigerian populace. One of the issues that is being questioned is one. Why was that proposed bill taken without public hearing? That's number one. Two, the bill appeared at the floor of the House on the 23rd of July, 2024. And by 31st of July, barely a week, it had been passed. Three, why is a law being amended to benefit an individual or not necessarily the society because by the provisions of the police act 2020 section 18 so section 8 where a police officer has attained the age of 60 years or has served a, as a police officer for 35 years whichever is earlier the person proceeds on retirement. And then there's usually one month period of compulsory leave preparatory to retirement. The current IG will be 60 years on the 4th of September 2024. And as I truly has not proceeded on any leave preparatory to retirement. And the indication is that the proposed amendment is meant to keep him in power in office till 2027, an addition of two years and seven months. Now, the critics of this uh, proposed amendment have said that, number one, it will lead to bringing politics into the Nigerian police institution politicizing the institution and it will also lead to growth stagnation in the police force because the normal thing is that there's only a single tenor for the uh, special general police in nigeria over the years you start for four years and you go now the present one uh, is going to serve for more than four years. And the other officers who are expected to take over are not happy about it. And there's some of certainly the instance of what happens in the judiciary, especially at the apex. Because in the police force, the federal police is the highest in rank in the police force. In the judiciary, you have the Chief Justice of Federation. Now, the Chief Justice of Federation if he has one month, ten months, whatever period to serve, will still serve. We have not had incidents of um, elongation of the tenure of um, CJN in Nigeria, as far as I can remember. Although the previous administration, uh, that of uh, President Buhari, extended the tenure of two special of police. Mohammed Adamo, he said it's then no for three months. And the reason given at that time by the Yagi was that he needed that three months to look for a successor to the then Inspector General of Police. Also, uh, sending that of uh, Osman Baba. And the two incidences led to litigations today. They are, what is going on is that there's an attempt to amend the Police Act to accommodate 
someone whose terror is almost as almost as fired and um, it questions the the rationale for such a decision all right thank you very sir obi Wan for that wonderful uh, analysis my advisor michael yes. Mona, of course uh, i also want to get your opinion on this proposed amendment because some have said that it too of course it the only amendment is not the allocation there are other provision also in this uh, proposed act so let us not situate it as if the art is uh, is meant to just uh, uh, okay, uh, okay. The that is that uh, just the main thing indeed uh -huh. uh, the, the location of the tenure of the IGP is a may is a prox of this amendment yes why was the amendment not made before now now uh, my colleague has stated the, 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 the way it is plainly straightforward you see the president is trying to I don't want to say the president, let me say the executive is trying to bring in somebody that they have confidence in so that the person can do their bidding. At the moment you try, you try to situate, you try to perpetuate somebody that is doing your bidding in a political office even beyond the time that the law has created for his exit are trying to bring in anarchy in the system. One is that everyone had all the while tried to uh, 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 attain that particular height will be will, uh, his interest will be diminished. His performance will go, uh, uh, will go down because he knows that there is no way he can attain that particular position. Because you see, like in the, the, the judiciary where you have the most senior uh, uh, justice of the Supreme Court becoming the uh, CJN. Yes. To understand until uh, the, the, the issue uh, tried to be become something else in the, during the uh, uh, Onogen era where Buhari was not interested in making sure that he became the CJN. You recall that it was only during his absence that the Vice President had to uh, make uh, on okay, <laughs> a substantive justice of the, uh, the CJN and uh, when he came back he made sure that the man was out the matter is still <laughs> in court <laughs> as we speak so the moment to try to make a law that is going to perpetuate a particular individual in office beyond the time that the, the, the person is supposed to remain in office you are trying to bring a serious problem into the system the reason I'm saying this is that this particular man came into office 2023 he is supposed to go out of office 2024 September as it were now just because wanting to remain for office for I mean in office for four years during which time you would have spent the first of your uh, uh, administration and now you would either because the law has not said that it can be allocated to a particular number of years and you, you will now maybe give him another four years tenure so that he will throughout your stay he will be the only one that is the IGP that is it is not funny it's a very serious uh, 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 issue concerning the stability of the Nigerian police force the stability of the society and it's not as if this particular IGP is performing beyond expectations or it has even performed up to what is expected of a modern uh, uh, policy of the, 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 the country. But you are trying to bring in the maybe I don't want to use the word they put it to me if that is the correct way to put it into the system by saying that the man must continue to be the IGP. It is a bad law and the way it was even um, accelerated brought in on the 23rd and then by the 31st it has become uh, it has passed through the process in the National Assembly and it's just awaiting the assent of, of the, the president. president. I, I'm sure maybe the president had forgotten that the law is waiting because he would have assigned him probably whatever happens because once it, the, the, the process of amendment of a particular law is set in motion. You are supposed to go through the procedure that is uh, made available. Uh, public hearing is part of it. People we must receive opinion from the public as to why you want to uh, 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 amend the particular law. But this one did not go through that. And I'm sure some people are even said, uh, said to go to court to challenge 
that particular, if it becomes law, to challenge it. And I think it is better for the president not to assent to that law. Let this IG go. After the IG, if you want to assent to that law, you must, you must, as a matter of urgency, remove the aspect that seeks to elongate or extend the tenure of the IGP. That, that, that particular provision is going to be uh, injurious. In, in, in I mean, it's going to be injurious. It's going to, it's going to uh, affect the spirit of those who are working, I mean, who, those who are aspiring to become IG. Okay. Uh, Pastor Mike, well, just a follow-up. You know, <clears throat> one other issue that have, uh, of course, arisen out of all of this is that, okay, let's even assume that this law is amended. Should this current IGP be benefiting? Should he benefit from it? Uh, that is another thing because if you see, if they say that the uh, the, the particular this law, if amended, takes effect from maybe third uh, of uh, September, the man will be a beneficiary because he's already uh, taking effect. You understand? He has not he has not uh, retired. Although by law he was supposed to have given notice of his retirement four months ago to the one month to the date of retirement. But the man has not given any notice. That means that he is aware of what is playing out. And so if we want to follow that particular system of giving one one month being out on compulsory retirement leave for one month before that, then he shouldn't be a beneficiary. But if we want to follow the aspect of saying that he is still on seat until the date of retirement, then he will be a beneficiary of the law, which is going to be too bad. Mm. That's, that's indeed, indeed. So uh, let, let's move, move over to what are the, what are actually the role of uh, the IGP? Why is the role? What are the role of the IGP in uh, in, in in the police force? Why is it such a sensitive role that the president or the executive seems to be interested in? Uh, the IGP, like I said earlier, is the highest ranking officer in the Nigerian police force and controls the security apparatus of the country and it is a sensitive role but then what we are seeing presently is where for the benefit of an individual a law is being amended and the supreme court has condemned that to make law for the welfare of the people yes. not for an individual whether for or against we recall some years back when you know some uh, decrees were made to ensure the confiscation of some properties of some individuals in this country. And the, the procedure to court has been called saying, no, you don't make laws targeted at individuals to put them at a disadvantage. Okay. Now, in this particular instance, as far as I know, the only proposal in the amendment, the only proposed amendment is to uh, make the tenor of the IG to be in line with the letter of appointment given to him or her. Meaning that whatever is the tenor given in the letter of appointment, no longer what has been provided for by section 18, subsection 8 of the Police Act. There's a new section 18, subsection 8A, which is an understanding what has been said in the provided in the previous section that currently the tenor of the IG should be in line with the letter of appointment and the question is why now why should that be why would you want somebody to be there does it mean that is the best hands in policing all right uh, but, but so, so, let, let's just to, because uh, this also touches on the issue of separation of power okay. and the rule of law because uh, we shouldn't really be worried uh, about the perception of the public when it comes to uh, the, the principle of separation of power which we know that is the bedrock of democracy in, in any civilized clan let's assume that the executive you know wants the IGPs uh, uh, not to be ended what, what about the legislators who have been elected by the people of, of course we have not had any uproars or uh, the people raising contrary opinion as to you see, uh, my, my challenge my, my fear is that uh, this legislature the present uh, national assembly and the uh, executive seem to be fused together there is no separation
should like they are working harmoniously. Uh, that's not it really be working. <laughs> <laughs> they are working at the same so that whatever the president wants is what the, 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 the National Assembly will give, who will do. And then at the end of the day, you have just the presidency dictating what goes on. Because I cannot imagine the president or whether it's an executive person that is sending it to the uh, uh, National Assembly for them to uh, uh, amend a particular law. And they horribly, horribly, we, we can excuse Wait them seven for, days. Yes, within a very short time, they, 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 they pass. Our first, second, and third. You, yes. you, can, you, you can recall <laughs> some of the abuse that go through this kind of sudden uh, 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 passage. Uh, there are always abuse that the president will want immediately, and they will do it. Two, three days, one, uh, even sometimes one day, the whole thing goes through <laughs> it, all the processes. So, the, when you are talking of uh, separation of powers as in decent democratic dispensation, this particular dispensation that we have does not have separation of powers. The powers of the executive, the powers of the National Assembly are fused. But why do you not have and it's so of unfortunate. What is important for the uh, principle of rule of law? And, and it's so unfortunate that because the thing is also extending to the judiciary. The moment what the executive wants, the, uh, the, the, the National Assembly wants, is what the, the judiciary stands. It becomes, we, we, we are, in fact, the society is lost. Yeah, because some people and have complained, but sorry, during the end starts, we have yeah. no judgment for people not to protest. The protest. You can imagine what, what happened. How can uh, somebody appear before a judge and say that we don't want people to protest beyond this particular point? And the judge, his wisdom, will grant that kind of prayer. And it's unfortunate that whatever the executive wants now goes to the, uh, the National Assembly, it is stopped. Whatever the National Assembly wants or the executive wants goes to the judiciary, it is stopped. And uh, the, the executive is also trying to stamp whatever the judiciary wants so that it will be, they will marry <laughs> <laughs> You can imagine. Because, uh, you know, they, they, they immediately had to, uh, 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 I mean, um, uh, amend, establish, I mean, amend the law or uh, 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 increasing the allowances and the, the salaries of the judicial staff so that they will be happy to do their work, to do their bidding. And it's so unfortunate, it's very dangerous for the society, for us to have this kind of arrangement. It is important, and I think maybe when we are discussing the, the issues that are before the uh, current uh, acting CJN, we will discuss those issues, that the judiciary has to be independent of the executive. The executive has to be independent of the National Assembly. The National Assembly should see itself as a body that is making laws for the good of the every Nigerian, for the good of the society, not for certain individuals, not for the executive, not for the judiciary, not for themselves. It should be for us as Nigerians. But the moment they see themselves as an appendage of a particular arm of government, it be, we are in trouble because we cannot have proper checkmates, proper balancing, proper check on each other. And whatever one wants is what the other gives, which is very dangerous for the society. So, so by Sabri, I'm following up on that. The yes. issue of checks and balances is important for sustenance of democracy. Yes. So what is happening? It seems that principle has been jettisoned for a collaborative approach in governance. And that is dangerous for our democracy. Because in a normal setting, there's always checks and balances. Where the government, the executive, wants to exceed its bounds, the legislature and the, uh, the judiciary as a church. But in a situation where whatever the executive wants, the legislature gives proper stamps, it is dangerous. It means the society is you know, at the brink of collapse. What we need in this nation is a situation where, like we had in yesteryears, if there is a proposed bill, it will be properly debated. Yes. The public will be given opportunity to make contributions. What are the advantages and disadvantages of that particular bill? For example, the issue now that confront this nation as a matter of urgency is the issue of security. Some have said that the government ought to declare emergency in the issue of security because of kidnappings, terrorism, and all that. And people have been saying without, you know, uh, equivocation 
that we need a different approach to policing in Nigeria. Yes. We need technological based policing where they will deploy technology to get to fight crime and ensure crime detection and all that. That is what obtains in the Western world, where technology is the main thing. But that is not what we are saying. And then it is not as if, since um, the current IG is, uh, uh, has been there, we have seen major changes. Some people, as two, a few days ago, some medical students were kidnapped. Thank God that, uh, I heard they've been, um, they be rescued. They be rescued. But why should that be in the first place? You discover that farmers don't go to farm anymore because of constant harassment, beatings, torture, and killings by unknown gunmen. Now, I believe that what we need today is, you know, policing that will be in tandem with what obtains in other shows, other crimes, and not for a particular person, maybe because that person has um, been good or has an affinity, whatever, with the executive to be retained at the expense of others who deserve such appointment. We need new hands. But then, the other thing is that, assuming that the president passes it like you raised earlier, will this current IG benefit from that law by the existing by extant law he has is already expected to be on compulsory retirement, retirement leave as at today because it is mandatory or compulsory one month retirement uh, leave and since 4th of august the 4th of september rather, just a few days away is not supposed to benefit from that uh, uh, from that act don't know that it appears that law is made purpose for his benefit. Yeah, but then it could be challenged. That's why the judiciary is Of course, that is. Not supposed to benefit, of course. And at the end of the day, he benefits. So it's not, it's, it's not why of the course, the, 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 the doors of the country are open for people to challenge the one that Buhari did, which was, which was just for about three months, was challenging court. But then, this one that is uh, even going for two years and seven yes. months, you know that. Uh, I, 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 I can assure you, if the law is challenged in court, it's likely going to be strike, uh, struck down. Yes. But it will be struck down at the High Court. And possibly, maybe, Court of Appeal. Hmm. We don't know what this current acting CJM might do if it gets to the Supreme Court. Then I can assure you, if it were to be in the old dispensation, the Supreme Court would approve whatever comes out from the executive. And is a very dangerous president. There are some very upright and strong-willed judges at the High Court that would not want to be bent. And that is why some of them, they would not allow them to go to the Court of Appeal. And there are some in the Court of Appeal too, who are very straight, uh, straightforward, who would not want to go the way of the executive. And so if it gets to the court of appeal, maybe you have out of the three that will sit, two will be against and one will be, I mean two will be in favor and one will be against. And then it goes to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will just stamp what was uh, brought in by the executive. So it's unfortunate situation because if it were when we knew that the judiciary were completely independent, you would be sure that that law, if it is assented by the president, will be struck down by the court or by the judiciary. Yeah, but is there any ethical consideration that, of course, that validates this extension? Is there anything at all that, that validates I, this? I, I, is there there's any nothing, reason? there's nothing, as my colleague has said, there's nothing that this man has done that is outstanding. And in fact, the man is like what we would have said, uh, uh, called uh, old school. He's still using the old manual way of policing, which is outdated. And the current situation, the current dispensation of what is supposed to happen in the present dispensation is that electronic uh, electronic system will be used in policing so that if like the kidnappers kidnap the, what is the purpose of having me and all that attached or linked to every uh, phone number that you cannot trace where someone is only to the particular location 
When you have facilities, you have the apparatus to get into the place and then get the people arrested. And then we are just sitting down and behaving as we, if we have no solution to uh, uh, some of these uh, security problems. We have solutions, my brother. It is the willpower to do this thing that is important. If we have a police IG that is uh, IT compliance, that would be ready to use a technology to pursue or to carry out a security uh, 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 this in a police in Nigeria, you will discover that some of these banditry kidnapping and all that will just win. Because the moment you kidnap, the next moment, few hours after, you will be uh, arrested. The moment you kidnap and discover that, you know, there, there will be no hiding place in the internet. And once you do that, so all this is what to do out. So it is important to 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 uh, 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 employ the uh, 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 technology that we have to ensure that we we uh, we, we, we tackle insecurity in this nation uh, frontally. The moment you still keep somebody that is old school, that is still using manual and is not ready to change, and uh, that is the kind of person you want to uh, 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 extend, uh, extend his uh, uh, tenure so that he will stay until that kingdom come. If you do that, then you, it means that you are telling Nigerians to go and die because there will be con a continuation of insecurity, there will be continuation of kidnapping, armed robbery, and all that. So, Okay, sorry. But, 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 so, yeah. this, uh, uh, so many people have raised the issue that this, uh, this amendment goes beyond the current IGB. Because the, the section you mentioned is irrespective of what the answer yes. is, mm -hmm. the appointment will not be tied yes. to the appointment letter of whoever. Yes. Doesn't that conflict with the public uh, servant, the act of regulating the uh, public servant as to age of retirement? Because what this elongation seeks to achieve is that there is no longer retirement age for IGP because the president can seek to always uh, give him another appointment. That is exactly what we're saying. The the, the law is that in public service you retire at age of 60 years or that five years of service, whichever is earlier. But with this introduction now, it means that a uh, general police can stay there up to the age of 70 years, 80 years, as the case may be. And the whims and caprices of whoever may have put him or her there. And we are saying that that is not entirely with the law. It's possible for the president, even while he is still the IGP, serving the first for 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 uh, yeah, and uh, then another, another four, four years. Four years. Yeah, yeah, and when uh, if is, uh, the, the next person says that he will continue, uh, yes, <laughs> you, you just uh, uh, make a mockery of the. Well, that doesn't raise a constitutional issue because, uh, for instance, if a sitting president at the twilight of his uh, administration gives an IGP four years extension and it happens that the president uh, loses re-election another person enters and now the law says that he needs to complete his unbroken <laughs> <four years. laughs> yeah. that means the, the although the act says that it is one tenure one term of uh, four years okay. you can be sure that once the president wants <laughs> that particular portion to be amended it will be amended to mean any number of tenure that they <laughs> <want>. <laughs> <laughs> in this national assembly, it would be amended to reflect what the president wants, and it's very, very dangerous. It's not laughing by that that we are laughing now. It's very and dangerous yes. for the society. And what I think we need to do, here, especially in the issue of security, is for the police force, whoever is there, to sit down and get a proper, a proper chat on how to properly police this country. Yes. We need to, apart from deploying technology, get used to policing through information gathering. In US, in Canada, other places, the police act as proper detectives. Before an event, crime, or any violation of law takes place, they already get information about it. And they wait and nip it at the board. They don't allow it to happen. They get the information. They can go to any length. They can even pretend to be, you know, um, a criminal, mix and get what they want. But here in Nigeria, that is not so. And that is why our security system is very porous. 
We need to get down to the basics, the pro technology, and ensure professionalism in policing in this country. And that is why you discover that the work appears to be overwhelming for police. Then they will deploy army. The traditional role of the Nigerian army is security of the territorial integrity of this nation, Nigeria. Not, you know, combating crimes and criminals in the society. But it's called that these days they deploy the army to beef up the police work. But by the time things are put in proper place, then policing will be easier, the society will be safer, and things will move on properly. Imagine train. People in certain were kidnapped. We saw it here. And they were there for, you know, for a long time. And people were doing negotiations. Ransoms being paid. These things are things that, you know, we, do you know that Guinea, they don't even know what is kidnapping, what, I mean, it is strange to them because it doesn't happen there. Why will that be? What is happening almost every day right. in this country? Day, any day, no day passes without you hearing of a uh, 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 kidnapping, terrorism, banning all those on no government and so on. Uh, and you say huh? that the, the, the police need to deploy um, intelligence. Uh, yes, the, intelligence the is Very good at that. Recall that when we had this uh, protest on uh, <laughs> on <end> bad <laughs> protest. The police were able to tell us that they, through intelligence gathering they were able to know that the protest would be hijacked mm. <laughs> by good <laughs> laws. They came up with that to, to tell us that they are still gathering intelligence in the society. So they knew very well right. that it would be hijacked. And it was actually hijacked. So they knew very well. <laughs> <laughs>